Hi there, everyone, and it's currently 17th of September 2012. You're currently looking at a radar imagery coming out of South Korea here on Typhoon Asamba. Still a very potent storm. Winds are packing upwards of 148, gusting to 212 kilometers per hour. And as you can see here on the radar imagery, it is making landfall just towards the west of Busan. Already brought some heavy rains out towards Jeju-do. And actually, let's show you a imagery or some video coming out of South Korea here, just showing these winds continuing to blow on shore. There is a risk of storm surge. All the flights in and out of this area here, even up towards Seoul, some have been canceled and across portions of western Japan. As you can see here, very gusty winds. Please click on the annotation on the screen to see the entire video. But going back to satellite imagery here, you can still see it's a very concise storm continuing to pull that moisture in out of the Sea of Japan here and also all the way down towards the south. And that's also bringing some heavy rains across portions of Shikoku, even over towards the Key Peninsula. We're seeing some reports of flooding here. Very intense rains continuing to push on shore. If we pull up Japan radar imagery, you can see that across Shikoku, you're getting upwards of 60 to 80 millimeters of rainfall in just a one hour period. This is definitely going to be bringing the risk of some flooding, even off there towards the north. In the Kanto Plain, actually, here in Tokyo, I'm seeing some thunderstorm activity as well, all due to that moisture inflow being pulled basically around the Kuroshio current here and all that warm water towards the south and pushing it on shore, hitting these mountainous terrains. That's causing some flooding. And plus, obviously, over here towards Korea, very mountainous terrain across much of this region. That's going to be causing some significant flooding in the interior as well, not just to mention the winds and the coastal storm surges that have forced many people to already evacuate. So where is this storm going next? Well, right now it is making that landfall there. Then it's expected to continue to push across the South Korean Peninsula, eventually off there towards the north, maybe even affecting Vladivostok into the long range as it gradually weakens. So, so that's really the good news with it as it continues to make on the northern progression. But as we pull back the satellite picture here, though, you can tell that it is interacting with this trough here off towards the north. You can kind of see it merging with it in the first few frames of this light imagery. And with that said, it's going to be making the rainfall expanse very large across this entire area, extending all the way off towards northern portions of China right now even across portions of North Korea as well. You're going to be seeing some uh, rainfall totals adding up between 1 to 200 millimeters. Even isolated areas could see more than that. So with that said, flooding is going to be a high of concern, not just these coastal winds, which obviously, as you saw in the video just a second ago, are impacting this entire area. Now let's take a look at the trim satellite, and I want to show you this because tanky look at the track of Samba. This is the rainfall totals over the past week. See so you track off there towards the north. was moving very slowly, then eventually took off in speed, so you don't see those totals add up as much, even though it was stronger off here. It was just moving faster, so you did not see that continuous rainfall. But look over the Philippines and portions of uh, India here off towards Thailand, also around Indochina. You see Laos and Vietnam here. Uh, this is that monsoonal trough in Samba really enhanced it. Look at all of this rainfall that pulled across from the west. It got picked up over the ocean here and then got dumped along the western portions of these land masses including the Philippines around Manila. Some serious flooding has been taking place. A lot of low-lying areas have been flooded. So it just, just shows how heavy this rainfall is and every time we see a storm come up this way lately it doesn't look like it is enhancing this monsoonal flow causing this significant flooding. Now, good news is as Samba continues to weaken, I do expect these flow to weaken, as you can see here on this uh, model outlook across portions of the Philippines. It's not going to be as strong as we've been seeing for the past week. Now, thankfully, since you have been seeing some continuous heavy rain, but let's look into the end of the work week, Thursday and Friday. And this is not too far out. Today's currently Monday, so still five days out here. It's not too long range, but we start to see the initialization of a storm system towards the west of Guam. Also, the European model is actually picking up on this storm system as well, pushing off there towards the west and eventually towards the north, continuing to intensify, and there you have it. A very strong and potent storm system just towards the east of Luzon, again, taking a very similar track towards Samba, and as you can see, that monsoonal flow kicking up again, yet again, across portions of the Philippines. Still, this is actually one week out here, but... GFS has been rather decent at initializing storm systems in the past, and also a few other models are picking up on this. So we're going to be watching this through the coming days as well. Definitely we'll continue to keep you posted here at westernpacificweather.com. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, as always, please post them in the comment box below. Please stay safe out there, and have a great day.